Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here, and in this video we're going to find the turning point of a quadratic graph. It's our second video on that topic. The reason it's our second video, I'm actually going to show you an alternative way. Now, in order to do this alternative way, I need you super good at a skill we've talked about previously in quadratic expressions. It's called completing the square. You must know this for this particular skill. I'd like you to pause the video, and for each of those two questions there, complete the square. Pause the video and have a go. OK, let's go through this. Remember, for quadratics like this, to write in completed the square form means you're going to write it in the form x add p all squared add another number q. So, how did we do these ones? Well, let's write y equals. We know it's of this form, x with something there, squared. We half the number negative 2 to be negative 1. That gets us, if we expand out in our head, x squared, subtract 2x, but we also get add 1. We take that 1 off and don't forget to subtract that 8 off as well. And that tidies up to y equals x, subtract 1 all squared, subtract 9. In this case, p is negative 1 and q here is negative 9. Exactly the same process here. We would write y equals, we would write x with a bracket squared. We half the number negative 8 to be negative 4. Square that in our head and think what we get. We get x squared, subtract 8x, obviously, but we get add 16, so we want to take off that 16, but don't forget to add back that 10 there. And tidying that up, we would get ourselves that y is therefore equal to x subtract 4 all squared, take away 6. In this case, p would be negative 4 and q would be negative 6. So I need you super good at that particular skill for this video. Now let's talk about what we've already learned. We now have learned how to find all of the following. To find the y-intercept, you make x be 0, and you substitute that into your curve, and you get the y number that matches it. To find the x-intercept, you make y equal 0 at those points, you substitute in y 0 and solve for x. And how do you get the line of symmetry? Well, it's halfway between the two x points. How so far have you got the turning points? Well, you know the x value at that turning point if you know the line of symmetry. If you substitute that x value back in to the curve, the equation of the curve, you can get the y value. Now, in this particular video, we are actually going to go for the turning point, but by completing the square. Now, just before we do that, I just want to remind you of the way we did it in finding the turning points of quadratic graphs 1. We did it by finding the roots, finding halfway between there, and substituting in that x value. I'm going to quickly go through it without talking because I've done this very example on the last video. So, let me do this one for you now. Now, I just want to show you that completing the square will actually get you that potentially quicker. So, for the very same curve, I want you to complete the square and find the turning points of the quadratic shown below. So, let's just have a go at completing the square and see if you can link it. Let me tell you what the answer was on the previous page. That was 1, negative 9. Let's see if we can complete the square and we see, we can visibly see how to get the turning point from the completed the square form y is equal to x squared subtract 2x subtract 8. Let's complete the square. We would do x subtract 1 all squared. That gives us x squared subtract 2x. Expanding that in our head, we get an add 1. So we take that 1 off and don't forget to take that 8 off. So therefore, we get y is equal to x subtract 1 all squared take away 9. Now, here's my question to you. Could you look at that and somehow see how you could get the coordinates 1, negative 9? Well, it always turns out that the opposite sign to that number gives you your x-coordinate of the minimum. So the sign here is negative 1. The opposite sign to that would be positive 1. And it always turns out that this number, as you see it, always gives you the y-coordinate of the minimum point. And you can see there that by putting it in the completed the square form, we actually get ourselves the minimum coordinate here, or the turning point. Now, if you actually go into Graph Transformations Video 7, you will see a reason why that works, but for now, we're just going to accept it. And let me just explain to you the rule in general, something for you to be able to copy down. So, in general, for any quadratic graph of this form, 
if you complete the square, rewrite it in this form here, it always, always, always turns out that the turning point of the curve of the quadratic, i.e. its maximum or minimum, is always the opposite sign to this number for its x value and the exact number here for its y value. So in this particular case here, I would know if I've got it in that form, straight away, right, I know that the minimum point here or the maximum or the turning point or whatever it turns out to be, that's at negative Q, positive R. And there you go, that is how you find it. So by completing the square, we get that minimum, maximum or turning point super quickly. So let's try some examples. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Right, let's complete the square. We've got y is equal to x squared add 6x add 5. So, trying to write it in completed the square form, I'm going to write an x there and squared there. I half that number, get plus 3. Expanding that in my head, I get x squared, I get add 6x, I get add 9. So let me take off that 9 I've introduced, but don't forget to add back that 5 that was in the original. So tidying up, I get y is equal to x add 3 all squared negative 9 add 5 is going to be negative 4. Absolutely for free then I can state therefore the minimum in this case is going to be the opposite sign to this for its x value negative 3 and the exact sign for this negative 4 for its y value and that looks from our graph to be pretty reasonable and there we go we've done it super quickly. Let's have a go at another one. Pause the video have a go. Okay, tiny bit more tricky here. We've got a negative x squared on the go. Same process applies. Let's try and complete the square. y is equal to, um, I'm going to write the negative x squared first. Negative x squared, add 6x, subtract 8. Now, back in the quadratic section, when I completed the square for ones that had a negative x squared coefficient, I always started by factorizing out that negative 1, just to stop it causing some problems. So let me do that here and I would get x squared subtract 6x add 8. Then I said, you know what, complete the square of this and afterwards multiply that negative 1 back in. So let's keep going with this process here. Keep that negative 1 even, you can keep outside the bracket. Let's complete the square of this. This would be x subtract 3 all squared. That gives me the x squared, the subtract 6x, but don't forget it adds 9 on. So you take that 9 off and don't forget to add that 8 back on here, all the while keeping the square bracket around it. y is therefore negative 1. Tidying this up, this would be x subtract 3 all squared, negative 9, add 8 is negative 1. Now at this point, it's a great idea to multiply the negative 1 back in, and what would we get? We'd get y is equal to, well negative 1 times this is just going to be negative, x subtract 3 all squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So let's write the positive 1 first and let's write it in this form here. Now, we have the turning point here which turns out to be a maximum for 3. Remember, it's always the opposite sign to this number in the bracket, so it's at 3. And remember, it is always exactly that number there. It is at 3, 1. Hey presto, it's at 3, 1. It looks right on the graph as well. Let's have a go at another one. Pause the video, have a go. Same old stuff, let's complete the square for y is equal to x squared, add 9x, add 18. So we're going to go y is equal to, let's try and um, complete the square here, so I'm going to have x with a squared, I half that number, let me write 9 over 2, keep it as a fraction, then I'm going to get x squared, add 9x, but then I'm going to add 81 over 4, so let me subtract off 81 over 4, and don't forget to add that 18 back in there. Tidying this up, I get x add 9 over 2 all squared. Now, I've got to make these over a common denominator. That's currently over 1. So I'm going to keep that as subtract 81 over 4. But this one here, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. Now, 18 multiplied by 4, 10 multiplied by 4 is 40, 8 multiplied by 4 is 32, 40 add 32 is 72. So this is going to be add 72 over 4. The denominators are common now, so we can tidy that up. So we're going to get ourselves the following. Negative 81 over 4 
add 72, well that gets us negative 9 over 4. So negative 9 over 4 there. And oh look, remember the turning point always has the opposite sign for this as its x value, negative 9 over 2, and it always has this exact number as you see it as its uh, y value for the turning point. So this point there is going to be negative 9 over 2, negative 9 over 4, and it looks like it works on the graph, and we're done. And that's it for this particular video. Thanks loads for watching.